<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all if you have a modified PlayStation Vita, a cold booting one with Enzo installed on firmware 3.60 or 3.65, how you can modify it further using the SD2 Vita all thanks to Yamt. Now Yamt is short for yet another remount tool. And this is a kernel plugin for, as it says here, the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV. Of course, it does require Enzo, as it states right here. So this is only compatible with firmwares 3.60 and 3.65. If you have followed my previous videos, either of them, but mainly the 3.73 to 3.60 videos with modifying a video from start to finish and getting it downgraded with Enzo installed on there, whether you used Vita Deploy or not, you should be in a good spot right now to continue on with this tutorial. This does feature, as it states here, the ability to remount all partitions, a clean SD to Vita patch system, no boot delays here, which is a big one compared to Storage Manager, as well as a basic and noob friendly GUI manager included. Now, some people might be wondering how this differs compared to Storage Manager. This is another type of SD to Vita tool, which I covered a few years ago. Well, Storage Manager still works just fine. However, if you're starting fresh, Yamped is what is recommended now. Not only it is easier and more streamlined to use, but the big benefit for the end user is that the boot times seem to be much quicker on Yamped compared to Storage Manager. However, that's not to say that Storage Manager has its own pros that Yamped will not have. One example being here, if you have a Samsung Evo micro SD card, you will not be able to continue with this tutorial. You see, Yamped is just not going to work with these SD cards for whatever reason. So if you have a Samsung Evo micro SD card and you cannot get a hold of anything else, you will have to use my previous Storage Manager tutorial. It will still get you to the same spot, but you're just going to be using a different plugin and different setup. However, if you do not have that, you can go ahead and continue on with this here for Yamped. Finally, before we really get started here, it is worth giving credit where credit is due. So a big thank you and shout out over to the folks and maintainers over at vita.hacks.guide. They've definitely helped me out with their really awesome written guides. They've helped out many, many other people here. And really, this video is just going to be a visual adaption of the written Yamped SD2 Vita tutorial. So if you need anything uh, in regards to a text-based tutorial to reference, feel free to check that out. The link is going to be down below in the description of this video. Now for our prerequisites to continue on here. First of all, you will need a modified PlayStation Vita, PlayStation TV, or Vita TV system. But not only that, it must be running either firmware 3.60 or firmware 3.65. If you have this already modded, you can go down to Settings, System, system information, and right here you can check your current firmware. Mine is running firmware 3.60, and as you can see where it says memory card, I'm running a PlayStation TV, which does not have a memory card in it, but it has a built-in one gigabyte of storage, just like the PlayStation Vita 2000 model. If you have a PlayStation Vita 1000 model, I'm sure you're already familiar with requiring a memory card. Next up, it must be modded with Enzo. That means as soon as you turn on the system from cold boot, you can come over to any piece of homebrew and launch it right off the bat without any errors. If you can do that, then congratulations, you are all good to go in terms of the console front right here. You're also going to need a method of connecting your Vita over to your computer. So for this, for transferring a couple files, you can press the start button and you can go over to select and you can pick how you're going to transfer over. I'm going to be using FTP. So of course, to set up a FTP server here, you press the select button in Vita shell and you're able to connect. If you followed my previous tutorials, you should be familiar with this process. When it comes to hardware, you're going to need, of course, a SD2 Vita. Now, it's a little awesome adapter that looks a little something like this, and it's going to fit where your game cart usually goes. So that game cart slot, 
that is exactly where this is going to go. Now you can get them for several different prices here and really it's going to depend where exactly you want to get it from and how long you want to wait for shipping. So I'm going to have several links down below in the description. As you can see, you can get them for like six US dollars or so from Amazon. If you go on eBay, they're a little bit cheaper here. You can check this out if you'd like. And even on AliExpress, they can be even cheaper. Now, one last thing I do want to mention on this is you're probably going to notice these version numbers like version five, version six, version six. There's a version three right here. When it comes to the version numbers, really these all do the same thing and that is just marketing. So it's not like a version three, you have to upgrade to a version five, or if you have a five, you have to upgrade to a six. Really, it's going to be about the same thing here. As long as the form factor is going to work on your Vita, you'll be okay. The only difference might be depending on the seller you purchase from, the physical quality of the SD to Vita might differ, but that's really all you have to worry about. So what I'm saying is, if you have a version 3.0, you can still follow along with this. It's the same as a version 6.0. It's the same hardware is what I'm trying to stress. Next up, you will need a micro SD card of some kind. If you're doing Yamped, you cannot use a Samsung Evo micro SD card, but most others should work fine. For my example, I'm going to be using this awesome SanDisk branded 400 gigabyte micro SD card. We're going to have something really awesome in this PSTV. For our software downloads, first of all, we're of course going to need Yamped. You can check the links for these down below in the description. So I would recommend giving the GitHub for Yamped a quick read, just so you can see the basic usage, installation, all of this right here. We're going to specifically be using the light version because that's really what we need for normal end users. But if you want to go advanced, you can do the full installation. To download this, you just need to click on the releases page and scroll down to find the latest release of Yamped. You can just download the yamped.vpk file from here here and save it somewhere you can easily find it. We're also going to need a second file here called storage format and this is going to make formatting much much easier than when we had to do it on storage manager. To do this you'll click the link down below in the description and come over to the download right here, click this download button, and save this VPK file somewhere you can easily find it. And if you're on Windows and need a FTP piece of software, typically I use WinSCP. If you follow along with my previous videos, you'll be familiar with this here, and it's pretty easy to use. Again, over at your Vita, make sure Vita Shell is running in FTP mode, or if you're going to transfer through USB, you can do that as well. But go ahead, grab your IP address as well as port number, but the port number is always going to be 1337. That won't change. As per usual, we can make a new session. And if you have your PSTV saved, that is great. But you're going to do FTP, no encryption, put in your IP address, your port number, and do anonymous login, and then log in. From here, we can navigate out and go over to the UX0 directory, wherever this will be. Now you can go over to either the downloads folder to save these, or you can go to a VPK folder or even right click and make a new VPK folder if you wish to. That'd be right clicking here, new directory. I typically save in a VPK folder and then transfer over the two VPK files. You can either navigate manually on the left side here, or you can just drag and drop them over. And that's about it. Once those are transferred over, we can disconnect from WinSCP. Back over at the console itself, what you're going to need to do is grab your SD to Vita device and grab your micro SD card. Slide the micro SD card into the SD to Vita device and then put the SD to Vita within the game card slot on your PlayStation Vita console. It's going to slide and pop in just like any other game cart should. Now with the SD2 Vita safely slotted into our Vita, we can go ahead and cancel out of the FTP server, navigate over to UX0, and navigate over to where your VPKs are installed. So I'm going to go to my VPK folder, and first we're going to install Yamped. Press X and yes on this. Thankfully, these are quite quick because they are so small. Next, we're going to install storage format, and it's going to be the exact same thing. Now with both of these installed, we just have to highlight them. You can press the square button to do that, hit triangle, and then delete the both of them. And there we go, our VPKs are installed. 
So we can go ahead and close out of here and come back to our home screen. Now, right here, the first thing we need to do is format that SD card that we just loaded up. To do that, go to storage format and launch this application. It's going to look a little something like this. For the target, you're going to select SD2 Vita. For the file system, you want to keep it text fat, and then you want to hit format target storage. Press X on here and wait. It will say formatted, please reboot. And it might look a little spooky because it's going to look like the system froze for a bit, but it should hopefully be formatted. So we can hit OK. Now go down to reboot the device and well, reboot your system. Now at this point, when your system reboots, there's not going to be any difference because we have not installed anything new on here, but we do have to now install YAMPT. So to do this, go to the YAMPT installer and launch it. We're going to go with the light version, so just go ahead, install the light version, and wait for your console to reboot. Now once your system reboots, you're going to want to scroll down to your settings, go into settings right here. We're going to go down to devices, storage devices, and enable YAMPT. Now for UX0, you're going to want to set this to the storage that you were just using. So if you're using a PlayStation Vita 1000 model, you're going to select memory card. If you're using a 2000 model, or if you're using a PlayStation TV, if you do not have a memory card, you're going to select internal storage. If you did have a memory card, you're going to select memory card. I know for my system, I do not have a memory card and I have one gigabyte of internal storage. So I'm going to select internal storage for UX0. For UMA0, you're going to change this to SD2 Vita. Now with all that selected, we can exit out of here exit out, close out of this, and we're going to completely power down our console and then turn it back on. Now, once your Vita turns back on, you should notice that your apps are back here. So congratulations, you did not lose them. You're still good at this point. We just had to select our storage there. But at this point, we can now go ahead and load up Vita Shell because we're going to begin transferring all of our data to our micro SD card. Once Vita Shell opens up, Navigate to the UX0 directory, so highlight it right here, go ahead, enter UX0. Now we're going to press down once, and we're going to hit the triangle button. You're going to hit mark all, and at this point, we're now going to hit triangle yet again. Go down and select copy. That is all good, we're going to confirm that. Now we're going to exit out of here, and you should see a new storage device, which is called UMA0. And as you can see, mine is almost 400 gigabytes in size, meaning that this is my micro SD card, and this should be the SD to Vita. So you want to go into UMA0, you're going to hit triangle, and you're going to hit paste. Now wait. And now as you can see, it's going to transfer over the contents of your internal storage or your memory card over to the SD2 Vita. Depending on how much content you have on there, this might take a while. For me, it's just going to take about a minute or two because I hardly have anything on here, but just wait for this to finish. So there we go, everything should be transferred over once done. We can exit out of Vita Shell completely and close out of it. Now, there's a couple things we need to do. First of all, go over to settings and check this out. We're just going to do a before and after. So what you can do is go down to system, go to system information, and I want you all to pay attention to where it says memory card. And you see my capacity is about one gigabyte of storage. Yours is probably going to differ unless you're using the same setup I am. So just keep that in mind. Next up, we can exit out of there and we're going to come up to devices, storage devices. And for this, you're going to now change these around. You're going to change UX0 to SD to Vita and you're going to change UMA0 to whichever other option you were using. So again, if you have to use a memory card, select memory card. If you were using internal storage, select internal storage. Since I know I was using internal storage, I'm going to select internal storage. Now at this point, we can exit out of here, exit out, and we're going to completely power down the Vita and turn it back on. 
So now once your Vita comes back, it should not look any different from before, but this is where we're going to do the before and after. Remember I told you all to note that option down in settings where it said memory card? Well check this out. We're going to go over to our settings, go all the way down to system, and go to system information. And if you are seeing this, congratulations, you should be looking at something absolutely beautiful, which is now a new capacity, which should be matching the micro SD card you just installed in your system, thanks to Yamped and the SD2 Vita. So at this point, congratulations, you are now using a micro SD card with your system. Now there's a couple things to note right here. First of all, if you want to reclaim any storage on either your internal storage device or your actual memory card, if you want to use it for other things such as putting PSP games on there, you can go over to Vita Shell and open it up. And there's going to be options here. So even if we check this out, as you can see, these are now flipped. So UX0 should be your micro SD card and UMA0 should now be either your memory card or internal storage. Well, within here, there are several different folders and files that you can delete. However, on screen, I'm going to have a list of directories provided by vita.hacks.guide that you should not delete out of UMA0. So if you're going to delete things out of UMA0, just don't delete the ones that are showing up on screen. Secondly, since this is a micro SD card, you might be tempted to, well, just plug this into your computer to transfer files over, which I understand that's actually how I do it. It's faster and maybe not easier, but it's much faster just connecting this directly through USB 3, for example, using an adapter. Well, if you ever want to transfer files to and from the SD2 Vita, I'm going to show you this real quick. First of all, of course, you can use your Vita like normal, but if you are using that micro SD card and you ever want to remove it, whenever you remove it, you have to completely power down your Vita. So before you touch that thing, power down your Vita, and once it powers down, you can connect it to your PC. Now, as you can see on my PC, it is showing up here. There's barely anything being used, but this is my 400 gigabyte micro SD card. And if you enter this, you're probably going to notice that there's a lot of files and folders that are not showing up. Well, that's because there is one or two important options that we need to enable. If you're using Windows and you're navigating this way, first of all, you need to go to view, and enable file name extensions and hidden items. But not everything is showing at this point yet again. So there's one more option that we need to change here. And you can go into view yet again, click on options. And within the folder options, click on view. And there's going to be a setting down here, which is hide protected operating system files. Now this might make things look a little bit uglier, but just to get visibility, we do need to disable this. So you can uncheck this box, hit yes to this, and hit apply, and hit OK. And as you can see, now everything is showing up at this point. So for example, if you ever need to put PSP games in here, you can go to the PSP MU section, and there should be your PSP directories. If you ever need to install applications, like copy them over directly here, you can put them in your app folder and everything is showing up at that point with no issue. Now, other hidden files like these right here are probably going to show up. So normally what I do is if I'm messing with anything on the Vita, I disable that option. And then once I'm all done, you can go back to view, options, view, and check hide protected operating system files. And there we go. That's all there is to it. And if you're going this route, whenever you transfer anything over, once you're done, make sure you always right click and safely eject your USB drive right here so you can pop it back into the SD2 Vita and turn your system back on. So there we go. At this point, the system is up and running yet again with no issues. And that is about it. I hope you enjoy your Vita and really hope you enjoy that extra storage that is now on there. It's really awesome getting the SD2 Vita and it truly opens up the system even further because at that point you can fill up with as much content as you want to and at a much more much cheaper price than getting proprietary Vita storage. So it's just a great option all around that I recommend to any modified PlayStation Vita owner. Anyways, that's about it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope it helped out. If it did, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone.